Hello and welcome. In this exciting video we are testing if a momentum trading strategy generates alpha. Please watch the previous video where I explained the regression equation to better follow along. Spoiler alert! The results are extremely interesting. Alright, so I got the notebook here containing the calculation for the momentum strategy built in one of my previous videos, which will be linked below. The initial settings are 12 month look back period, top 3 performers and a 1 month holding period. In the first step I'm storing the monthly momentum portfolio returns in a series. So this is containing the 1 month holding period return of the top 3 performers over the last 12 months. As you see for the index, I'm starting at the second row of the MTL12 index, which is the index of the data frame containing the cumulative 12 month returns. Reason behind that is simply that the first momentum portfolio return will be the row after the first 12 month cumulative return as you hold the portfolio for one month. So the first row will be the first formation date and the second row will be the return of the first one month Holded portfolio. That's why you are starting at the second row of the MTL12 index. We want to give this series a name, just calling that MOM for momentum. So this is looking like this. So we have monthly portfolio holding return data. Next, I'm taking the pulled S&P 500 data, pulled above here. So this is just the ticker symbol for the S&P 500. And here I'm just taking the relative changes and I'm accumulating them over one month. So this is an old story, but I will link a video explaining how exactly this is working. Also here I'm giving that series a name. I'm just calling it S&P. So with that I'm getting monthly S&P 500 return data. Now I want to bring together momentum portfolio returns and S&P 500 returns. Therefore I'm using the pandas concat function and pass both series S&P 500 and momentum. With that, as you see, I'm getting a merged data frame like this. As you also see, I'm ending up with NAN values for the first 12 rows for the momentum returns. So I'm just going to drop them. So this is my final data frame containing both S&P 500 and momentum portfolio returns. So let's visualize that and take a look at how they perform compared to each other. So what you see is we have this strong outperformance overall of the momentum trading strategy compared to the S&P 500. Next, we need the risk free rate. So currently we only have S&P 500 returns and momentum portfolio returns, but as explained in the previous video, we need the market return adjusted for the risk free rate and the strategy or asset return adjusted for the risk free rate. So I'm just pulling the risk free rate from this side here, macro trends, and this containing a yearly treasury yield. I will link this in the video description. So if I'm executing that, I'm getting a data frame like this. So what you're seeing here is a so-called multi-index in the columns here. So I don't want to have this level of the index. So I'm just accessing this level of the index. So this is what I'm doing here. So I'm getting rid of this level of the index. So I'm just passing the exact same name here. And then I'm getting a data frame as you are used to. So containing columns and rows. With that, we have our risk free data frame. And the only thing we need here is the year and the year close. So this is a percentage value. So currently 
we are around 5%. So let's filter for only those two columns here, year and year close. This is what I'm doing here. So let's take a look at that. So this is our data frame, our risk uh, free rate data frame. And as this, these are yearly values, right? So this is a yearly value and it is a percentage value. We have to do a mathematical operation here, which is simply dividing this value by 100. And also as we want to have it on a monthly basis, as our returns are on a monthly basis, we also divide it by 12. This is what I'm doing here. So I'm taking this value divided by 100 and then by 12 to have the monthly values here. So you can just ignore this warning. And finally, we are ending up with a monthly value for the treasury bond each year. Now, we want to bring the risk-free data frame together with our return data frame. And to do that, I want to show you how the index of our return data frame is looking like. So you see we have monthly data here, right? Every month or every row here is also containing a year value. And the idea is now simply to map those values stored in the risk-free data frame to the values in this data frame. And for that, we are just accessing only the year of that uh, return data frame. And then we can just map the values here stored for 2023 to all rows containing a 2023. And then we have everything we needed. So for that, so this is how it's looking like if you just access the year of the index. So now we see for every row, we have a year value and we can simply map the risk-free uh, values to these year values. This is what I'm doing here. I'm calling that merged as I want to merge the return data frame talk with the risk-free data frame. So I'm using talk.merge pass the data frame I want to merge with, so RF. And then I'm saying left on the year of the return data frame and right on just simply the year. Okay, so let's do that. And as you see now, we are exactly getting what we wanted to get. So we have year values here and we have the monthly risk free rate, right? So these are simply for all 2023 values, we are getting the same value here, right? Makes sense because for 2023, we have this monthly risk free rate. So we got our merge data frame. And now we just need to get our strategy return adjusted for the risk free rate and our market return adjusted for the risk free rate. So I'm calling it as in the previous video. So I'm just creating a column here, R minus RF. And this is simply my momentum return minus the year close, which is my risk free rate. And same for the market return, RM minus RF, S&P return minus the risk free rate. So I got my strategy return or asset return adjusted for the risk free rate and my market return adjusted for the risk free rate. And with that, we can build the regression. So for the regression, I'm taking stats models. You can also take scikit-learn, will give you the exact same results, or you can even build that from scratch without a library. That's a pretty nice exercise. First, independent variable is simply my market return adjusted for the risk free rate. So this is my X variable. And as stats models always needs a constant, it doesn't provide a constant by default. I'm adding a constant here uh, using the SM add constant function. So scikit-learn has a constant by default, by the way. So this is my independent variable. The dependent variable 
is my strategy return minus the risk free rate. So I'm showing that in Y. And then I can simply set up my model using uh, ordinary least squares regression, pass my dependent variable and my independent variable. And then I'm fitting my model, store that in results. And finally, I can take a look at the results of running this OLS regression with my independent variable, market return minus risk rate, and dependent variable, strategy return or asset return minus risk rate. So these are the regression results. Let's take a closer look at that. First of all, these two coefficients here are your alpha and your beta. So the coefficient of the constant is your alpha and the coefficient of the market risk premium, so RM minus RF, is your beta. What you can nicely see here is a beta value higher than one, which is quite intuitive. So you're buying the top three movers over the last 12 months. It would be, let's say, surprising, if not impossible, if those top three movers are moving less than the whole market. So we got this beta and it is highly statistically significant. Now let's take a look at the alpha. The alpha is the monthly return we would get over the market return. So the alpha is telling you on a monthly base, you're getting 0.9% more running this strategy than the market would give you. 0.9% times 12 would be 10.8% over one year, which is remarkable. However, this alpha has quite a low T value and a high P value, which goes hand in hand, which means that the alpha is not statistically significant. So we cannot say if this alpha was being generated by chance or not. But now let me show you an interesting thing. If we tweak the parameters and consider a shorter look back period. So we are going all the way up in the script where we define our rolling window. This year, we're just taking a shorter look back period, run everything from here on. Scroll all the way down. We now see that the alpha becomes statistically significant, not only on the 10% level, but on the in finance most relevant significance level of 5%. These are just some examples. There's a lot more to check out and examine here. However, this should give you an overview and starting point of how you can analyze an asset or trading strategy using some statistical tools. Thanks a lot for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.